everyone, this is Mita and today I'm very excited to present my restaurant bookkeeping spreadsheet. If you are an owner or manager of a small restaurant, bistro, bar, cafe, this spreadsheet will save you a ton of time. It's already set up, so there is no setting up for you to do. You can enter your income and expense transactions right away. You can also enter any capital expenses and any loans related to those uh, purchases like equipment, furniture, etc. The dashboard gives you an up to the minute uh, overview of your business performance. It shows you your income, expenses, profit on a monthly and year to date basis. Plus, you can see a drill down of all your income and expense categories. There's also an automatic profit and loss statement generated and a balance sheet template. Plus, I'm also including a very neat inventory tracker. So let's see how this works. Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. I am very excited to present my restaurant business bookkeeping tracker. This is very easy to use. And I'm first going to go over all the tabs in the spreadsheet and then go into a little more detail. The first tab is the settings tab and over here is where you get the different income and expense categories and you can also enter your company name and the fiscal period. The next tab is the dashboard and this is where you get a bird's eye view of how your business is performing along with graphs. Then we come to the income tab and this is where you would enter all your transactions. This is the expenses tab where you would enter all your operating expense transactions. Then we come to the capital expenses tab and here you would enter any uh, items you have purchased which fall under the capital expense category like equipment, leasehold improvements and so on. Then we have the P&L statement. This is automatically generated. Then we have the balance sheet. It's a template which you can fill out. And you have a debt schedule where you can enter information related to any loans that you currently have. The settings tab is where you can enter your own uh, company name. You can change the fiscal period if you like simply by typing in these boxes. Uh, the income sources, operating expenses, cost of goods sold and capital expenditure categories already come pre-filled. But you can go in and change any of these as you like. Simply go in and type it in. Let, let's say we call this other income source and similarly you can do the same for the operating expenses cost of goods sold and capital expenditures the dashboard gives you a bird's eye view of how your business is performing both on a year to date as well as a monthly basis over here you see the annualized uh, view or the year to date view you get to see your income gross profit net profit uh, uh, cost of goods sold operating expenses and you also get the same information on a monthly basis. You also get a drill down by each income source and by month. Similarly for cost of goods sold and for operating expenses. You also get to see what your capital expenses were for each month. And on the top you have these graphs which quickly give you uh, a look into how your business is performing. Uh, the percentages of income and the expense categories. Now we come to the fun part. This is the income tab and this is where you would enter all your income transactions. You can enter this on a daily, weekly, monthly basis as convenient for you. So say we enter for April 30th, our food sales for that month were, say it was 34,000. Say the sales tax for that that we paid was 3400. And the tips that we received was 6000. So as you can see, these amounts get uh, summed up on top. And your dashboard also shows the figures for April, it was 34000. Also, another point to note is that the income that will get uh, recorded in the dashboard and the PL statement is the income net of sales tax and tips. 
So as you can see in the dashboard, the total income is 162,000. And this is what you would see over here, as well as in the profit and loss statement. Now we come to the expense transactions tab. And here too, you can enter it on a daily, weekly, monthly basis as convenient to you. Say for April 30th, we have payroll expenses. Of say contract labor and we paid two thousand dollars um, you can enter sales tax if you like um, then you can enter who it was paid to the receipt number and any notes and you can again get as detailed as you like because you can have front of the house wages again broken down into management or hourly and you also can enter all of your cost of goods sold expenses like food cost uh, meat cost, poultry cost, etc. As you can see, I've entered a number of transactions over here. Then we come to the capital expenses tab, and over here you can record uh, purchases made for assets like equipment, leasehold improvements, any vehicles, furniture fixtures, and so on. And you can also enter any, any loan related information related to each of these expenses. Then we come to your profit and loss statement. This is automatically generated and is also printable. So it's very handy to have at the end of the year to either give to your accountant or use yourself for tax filing. And here is the balance sheet. Uh, you can use this as a template to fill out uh, all of your uh, asset and liability information. This is the debt schedule tab and over here you can enter information about all your existing uh, loans related to your business. I'm also including a restaurant inventory tracker with the restaurant bookkeeping spreadsheet. This has a bunch of features and will help you to keep track of all of your restaurant inventory. It will also show you when any product is close to expiry, helping you to reduce food wastage. It will show you reorder quantities and when you need to reorder your total inventory value. And you can also record your vendor details. So let's see how this works. You could enter an item number. This is um, optional. And then enter an item name, broccoli, say for instance. Then choose the category. We'll choose vegetables, where it is located, produce section. And today, this is the, the date of recording is uh, January 24th. So say the expiration date is January 30. Um, the stock quantity is 10 currently, and the reorder quantity is five. Then the unit price say of each head of broccoli is two, and the total inventory value automatically gets calculated at 20. You can also enter the brand, vendor, vendor contact person, and vendor contact info if you like. Now let's say that uh, the expiration date for a product, say the salmon fillets, is going to be Jan 27th. And remember, today is 24th. So as soon as I enter Jan 27th, that whole row gets highlighted in orange because anything that will expire within one to three days will get highlighted in orange. Now say this is already expired, so let's enter a date past today, like Jan 22, and you'll see that the whole row gets highlighted in red because anything that's already expired will get highlighted in red. Now this column, the days before expiration column, shows you the number of days that any produce uh, will expire in. And depending on the number of days, uh, you will get a color gradation going from green to red. So something that is set to expire in, say, next year is going to be green. Something that's closer to expiry, like, say, in February 24th, is uh, more like a light yellow. And, of course, anything that has already expired will be highlighted in red. Another feature is the stock quantity and reorder quantity. So when your stock quantity, your current stock quantity falls below the reorder quantity that you have set, this column, the reorder column, 
will tell you, yes, you got to reorder it. And the whole row will also get highlighted in gray. So for, for example, say the multigrain bread, uh, you have set the reorder quantity to 20. And currently in stock, you have 12. Immediately, the whole row gets highlighted in uh, gray. And you are told, yes, it's time to reorder. Thank you so much for watching. You can get the spreadsheet at my website, moneyusage.com. The link to the spreadsheet is also in the description and comment section below. Uh, if you like this video, do please give it a like and subscribe to my channel so you can see more of my videos. And do also please leave me your comments, uh, questions and suggestions. And I'll catch you in my next video.